Hi, my name is Dr. Shudipto Prakrasi. I am the chairman of the Division of Ophthalmology at the Medanta Hospital in Gurgaon and Delhi. Uh, well, to answer your question, I need to be able to explain to you what is a cataract. If I can use this model, what this will show you that the light, like in a camera, enters from outside into the retina through this clear lens. When this becomes opaque, that is what is known as a cataract, as can be seen in this one. So if I have this in the line of vision of the eye, when the light will enter, it will go through the cataract and it will not be able to be focused on the retina. So traditionally, what was being done <coughs> was a large cut was made around the eyeball. The entire lens is to be thrown away and we used to give the patient glasses from outside. Now from the, from the era of the early 80s, we started then putting our intraocular lens back like this inside the eye from where we had taken out the cataract. From 1994 onwards, what we started doing was, instead of making a large cut, we used to make a small hole on the side of the eye and through which one probe used to go and with ultrasound used to break away the cataract and then we used to roll a lens and put it, put it exactly from where the cataract was taken away. This was working very well till the last four or five years when we are now seeing a technology which is based on the femto laser platform. Now in this, the laser takes over most of the precision driven steps of the cataract surgery, namely three. One, how to make the cuts and the incisions on the cornea, which is at this level. Number two is to cut the capsule of the lens of the cataract. And number three is to chop the cataract inside the eye itself. What this has done is to tremendously increase the precision of the outcomes that we are able to generate to all our patients way beyond what FACO multiplication has been able to achieve in the last 25 years or so. Well, as far as the surgical process is concerned, there are two areas in which the patient is to undergo the entire process. The first is on the femtolaser. It's a semi-sterile room where we are able to cut the incisions and cut the uh, capsule of the cataract and also fragment the cataract into multiple pieces after which the patient gets up and goes to the sterile operating area wherein the fragmented cataract is removed and an intraocular lens is pushed inside the eye. That is where the changes and differences between the traditional phaco emulsification and a laser-based, femto-laser-based cataract surgery is concerned today. Well, uh, more than 1.2 million surgeries have been done worldwide till now, which really says a lot for this technology. It, it is the most uh, tremendous change which has happened after we converted from the basic extracapsular surgeries into phaco emulsification about 25 years back. So this is really the ne big, next big step that we are looking into to create a much more precise outcome delivery to all our patients. Um, there are about nearly 120 machines. When we bought our unit, which was uh, nearly four years back, we were one of the first people in the country. In fact, ours was the first cataract refractive suite which was installed in the world. And since then, a lot of people have started now doing this procedure. It is uh, very effective, very, very precise. There is a short learning curve for the surgeon, but if you are looking at the outcomes which the patient is going home with today, there is just no doubt why everybody should actually get into the laser procedures today. The femto laser procedures have a distinct advantage in many special cases which were very difficult to deal with with the traditional surgeries, namely subluxated cataracts, for example, pseudo exfoliation capsular thickening cases where we know that the basic cutting of the capsule is actually a problem, especially in hypermature white cataracts, which is seen a lot in our country. 
to actually make a precise opening is a big challenge with the traditional surgery, which may mar the safe outcomes of the procedure itself. So with the advent of the FLAX procedure, the femtolaser laser uh, assisted cataract surgery, it has really become a breeze for us to operate on all these complex cases today. Well, by and large, uh, you know, there is a cost factor involved in the procedure. The surgeries may range approximately about 35 to 50,000 rupees more than what a traditional surgery may cost you. But looking at the outcomes, in a majority of the cases, the costing is really worth the results which we are actually being able to deliver to the patients. So costing initially, even though it was an issue in our country, but more and more people are going in for the laser procedures in our experience. Well, uh, FDA has actually uh, cleared the, the femto laser procedure. It, were, it took a many, many, many sort of uh, trials and a long number of years for this uh, laser to come. And as like in every other medical device and surgical device, we do tend to sort of uh, look at the FDA approval as a major step in establishing the safety of the procedure and the technology. We now have all the machines which are available in our country which are FDA approved. Well, um, I for one believe very firmly in the fact that the God's created eye can never be duplicated whatever we do. <clears throat> this is a big step towards achieving near perfection. A near, I would say, predictability and the safety margins being so high, we are getting there. Nothing can be perfect and I think we will keep striving for better and better technologies. One thing which has actually augmented this is something known as the Aura. This is a, a technology where we are trying to re-establish what we have done on the table itself, which means that after you have planned a certain procedure, you expect a certain result. Now, there is no way of knowing once you have done that uh, procedure whether the patient has actually landed up there. Now, using this technology, what we have found is that what you are desiring to do for the patient, you land up exactly there. So the predictability of what you achieve becomes so high, becomes so, I would say, predictable for uh, us to uh, tell the patients it becomes something which has never been seen till now. I am sure this is not the end. The technologies will keep on changing. The procedures are getting better and better. They are going quicker and faster. The uh, intraocular lenses we are using are getting more and more high tech. And with the uh, available optics and the technologies which are being able to modify these lenses with the age also, we now have different kinds of lenses like multifocal lenses, adaptive lenses, light sensitive lenses, which will take technology leaps and bounds in the future. You know, we have come a long way from where we started nearly about 27 years back in the field of cataract surgery, where the person used to lie down for at least a period of 7 to 10 days and not, was not allowed anything. To what we have today, people just coming in, walking in, getting the procedure done and go back straight to work or to play golf or to do whatever they want. The technology is going leaps and bounds and in the uh, surgical technology, there are many different areas from the machines to the lasers to the documentation of the intraocular lenses, which are now seeing a sea change from what we have been using for so many years now. Now the bionic eye, as a lot of people call it, is not far in the future. Apart from the cataract surgery which we spoke about, there are a lot of work being done on stuff like retinal chip implants where even blind people are now being able to see things. So I think the technology and the future is really exciting for us. We've been in the line for the, for the last 35 years now. But I think what we see in the future, what has happened in the last 25 years, today is now taking maybe a year to change. So it is just the time is getting shorter and shorter for more and more change. We are excited.